Well, thanks for tuning in to Bloomberg Quint with me, Neerat Shah, and my colleague, Ira Duggal. And we take you through all that you should be watching out for in the run-up to this morning's market open. Quickly take you through the top headlines and the newsmakers today. And, well, a round-up. The U.S. markets ended on a fairly tepid note. Asia started off on a flat note. And keep in mind, the SGX Nifty is indicating a mild positive start to the session today. We've got a big meeting coming up. That's the U.S. Federal Reserve Open Market Committee meeting. A rate hike is more or less factored in for tomorrow. Yeah. Amongst other news, CPI has hit a new low in the month of May. And April IIP, while it's beaten estimates, has slipped to 3.1%. In corporate news, we are watching out for the Anil Ambani Reliance Group. They're on a massive cleanup drive. We've got news of them wanting to list their general insurance company and Bloomberg, our partners, reporting that there is deal talks underway for their undersea cable network business as well. And amongst index stocks, which could be in news today, Sun Pharma, they've got the USFD approval for the Zetia generic. It's a large drug. The market size is fairly large. So watch out for some reactions on Sun Pharma today as well. But you know, um, just talking about what's happening to the markets by and large, and yesterday, we, Ira, you would remember we were talking about how NASDAQ, NASDAQ had actually cracked. cracked in Friday's session. Yes. So it didn't quite crack in yesterday's session, but it continued its downward drive. So NASDAQ, S&P, Dow, all of these indices were down in the session yesterday. As a result of that, we've got this fairly tepid start for the Asian markets. Um, the interesting thing to note also was Wipro. Uh, yeah, Vip we should be swift. Yeah. The other, yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> so this is, of course, the delivery trades. But if you just look at Wipro, before I move on to this, uh, Ida, the ADR uh, tanked viciously. In yeah, what was going on there? There was some confusion. So it, it goes X bonus today, Wipro okay. out here in India. Okay. Now, because of that confusion and lack of clarity from the management, I think people uh, put 2 and 2 is equal to 5 and started beating down the ADR. Okay. Then immediately the clarification came in that the X dividend date as well as the X bonus rate for the ADR is yet to be determined. Okay. And therefore, the stock recovered parts of it gains. But keep in mind, Wipro, the stock today will will be, will be well, knocked down. lower yeah. because of it being X bonus. So don't get alarmed if Wipro is, you see a downtick today because Wipro essentially goes X bonus. But uh, Ira was talking about what happened in trade yesterday. I think we saw some delivery base selling in some certain large cap names. So if you look at, I've picked up two or three <coughs> Tata Motors was down 3%, quite a strong fall. Uh, delivery base selling about 55% uh, delivery volumes in Tata Motors yesterday. Similarly for Larson and Tubro, I think that's the stock that will come up. Down about 2%, a heavy weight. Delivery base selling as well, 56% uh, as on the National Stock Exchange. And there were two or three other stocks on the index, which saw some fairly high delivery base selling. So let's see if indeed they recover a bit in the session today or no, because while Asia is starting off on a flat note, yeah. SGX Nifty is indicating that mild bit of positive start. So after a red day, okay. you would not want a big red day today. At least the start doesn't indicate that we'll have a red day. Now, okay. the question Ida is, are queues supporting that? I mean, uh, overnight or post-market hours yesterday, a bunch yeah. of news flow has come out. True. Uh, we'll just start with some of the macro data just to give you a picture of what's going on there. We had the consumer price inflation numbers and the industrial output numbers come in. Uh, industrial output very briefly was at about three odd percent, slightly uh, higher than what we saw previous month, much lower than what we saw last year in the same month. So that story is fairly consistent. We are in a slight slowdown phase. Slight is actually an understatement. We are in a slowdown phase in the economy. I want to focus uh, near on the consumer price inflation numbers. Uh, 2.18%. <coughs> Uh, remember that the RBI has a band of 2 to 6 percent and I think mm. nobody and this was the chatter doing the rounds on Twitter yesterday after mm -hmm. the number came out. Nobody thought that the first breach of that bound would be to the downside as opposed to the upside. The upside. Everybody was worried about breaching 6 percent. Nobody was worried about breaching 2 percent. Well, <coughs> we're almost there and analysts are saying that we may get into the one handle in uh, the June month, which is the next data point that the RBI will have access to before their uh, policy decision coming up in August. That's not all. The cleaner dry of the ADAG group. Let's wow. talk about this. What's yeah. going on? on with this group right. i mean we've got a news point today we've got the rcom story playing out all through last week and then these guys have gone and announced two listings coming yes. up right yes. the amc business and then yesterday they said that they are uh, going to list a general insurance company as well yeah so you know you could bifurcate this group into two per se as well as difficult as it sounds yeah. Ida, but a good apple and a few doubtful apples if you will and, and one really bad apple yeah. <laughs> yes but yeah so I think Reliance Capital would probably qualify as a good Absolutely. apple. I, I think and I think the net books are all all right. Um, and then Reliance Communication. So as Ida said at the start, our sister concern Bloomberg has come out with this note on our comp. So let me start with that. Yeah. They're looking to sell the undersea cable unit. Now, don't just get too enthused by this because I was just talking to Somit uh, who tracks telecom. Yeah. And he was telling me that the numbers, I mean, 
it's debatable because we don't know the exact numbers. They haven't spoken about it at all. We don't know the size of this at all if this were to happen and go through. But I mean, from what they've been planning to do, which is reduce debt by 20, 25,000 crores, this will be just a small bucket into an ocean, so to say. But yeah, it just improves the visibility of debt clearance from Arcom. Absolutely. And the other thing on Arcom here, and I'm sure hmm. your market guys will weigh in on this, what is left in Arcom? Hmm. Uh, they've sold uh, their, uh, or they're in the process of selling their tower business. The wireless business is getting yeah. amalgamated. Yeah. Now the undersea cable this business is going to go. So Arcom, eventually when all of these deals get done, is what? Yeah. I think that's a question that needs to be answered. Yeah. So frankly, from an equity investor's perspective, you invest in a business for the growth that the business is going to give you and not because the business is deleveraging. Yeah. And therefore, that answers the question. I mean, as, as you, I think, uh, pointed out as well, the debt has been downgraded by almost yeah, everybody. They're default rating, technical default rating at yeah. least uh, on a lot of and these. And I think you're making this point that why, why is it that the rating agencies held back for so long to do this? Yeah. So from an equity investor's perspective, frankly, nothing. But uh, Reliance Capital. Yeah, I think this is interesting. It's that one stock that has actually gained quite a bit from ADAG uh, stable. Okay. And if they manage to do this and create value, remember, I mean, all of them, uh, Motilal Oswal, Edelweiss, everybody is looking on that some more part valuation. Yeah. So why should it be any different for Reliance Capital? Yeah, That's the only the thing, thing I want to mention here huh. on the insurance side very quickly is that this is going to be a year where we're going to be flooded with insurance paper. Uh, there's one life insurance company coming, uh, which is SBI Life, hmm. uh, but there are five government general insurance companies which also yes. intend to list yes. this year. Uh, I mean, I know the first couple of insurance IPOs got a good, uh, you know, good showing and good investor interest, but uh, there's going to be a flood of insurance paper out there this yeah. year. You know, I personally would be more excited about the AMC business listing than the insurance business sure. listing, quite frankly, sure. with, when it comes to Reliance, because it's the third largest AMC. Yeah. So in that sense, that should be really, really interesting. That makes sense. Let's move on, though. Yeah. <laughs> Just a couple of uh, things that I do want to mention. Uh, uh, the bulk deals that we've gotten overnight. So it up three or four small names. There is yep. a SunTech Realty. Uh, Ordinary Equitas, uh, uh, there is uh, Creation Investments, uh, which has uh, done some selling. Okay. Sorry, I think we're having a little bit of trouble there trouble on the there. chart. So, yeah. you know. But that's okay. <laughs> yeah. But the two interesting stocks, uh, Ira, one of them is Wellspin, wherein Inside Solutions has sold nearly half its stake. Uh, okay. So, they've almost gotten out. The key is, the buyer is Bidla. There's a big overhang going out of Wellspin Enterprises because Bidla has come in and bought about 2.5% stake. Okay. And that's good from a Wellspin Enterprises perspective. The more important one and a small stock hmm. is Sinclair Hotels. Now, why is this important? Because it was known in, in informed circles yesterday that uh, Xander Fund hmm. is selling out its stake. It was announced, it was known that it is going to be that way okay. and promoters could be buying. So while that would have happened and promoters would have bought, I think the interesting names that are coming out amongst others are uh, the marquee investor Purinju Veliat. So ah. the name that is coming in is Osef Varid Veliat, who I believe is related to Purinju Veliat. Hmm. And he's bought about 0.6% declared, but I think from what I pick up from market sources, it's about 2% stake that the value investor has bought as well. So his name creates a bit of a flutter in the stock, plus the fact that promoters are seemingly buying so that should be this interesting. Is Sinclair Hotels. Sinclair Hotels. It's interesting that this deal is happening at a macro level. Also, the hotel industry seems to be starting to look a little bit better. So there's some investment interest that's picking up in that space. Yeah, and a debt-free uh, hotel, is uh, it, a debt-free group, uh, okay. Ida. More importantly, if you just look at, I was just looking at the books, the declared investments of land that they hold, which was bought about 20, 30, 35 years ago, and they bought a bunch of land, is only 11 crores. Mm -hmm. So it's actually done at book value if you extrapolated to market so value. big real estate play as big well. Big real estate play as well. So that is one. But more importantly, Ira, the last thing that I do want to mention is Sun Pharma. I think they've got uh, the approval, USFT approval for the Zetia generic. It's mm. a large, large product, yeah. a large market size. And Sun Pharma has been besieged with bad news, left, mm. right, center. Mm. Can they come out and do something which could actually help uh, them? And would the Zetia generic, essentially this announcement, help Sun Pharma? That's the key thing. So, let's so the stock moves on that? Ideally should, uh, we don't know, Pharma is just in such a big, bit of a bugbear, but you know, yeah. June is a great month, maybe this helps Sun Pharma get that bit of an uptick as well. Sounds good. So we've uh, given you a wrap of the macro news, some of the stock specific news, yeah. uh, and uh, we've can, you can track all of these stories on BloombergQuinn.com. We've yes. got write-ups on pretty much all the stories that we've discussed, and we'll come to you every morning here. We will come to you every morning. Just before we wrap up the era, what phone do you use? Is it an iPhone? Okay, I use an Guilty iPhone too. Charged. Guilty is charged. No, the interesting thing that came out overnight, I don't know if you uh, got a chance to look at it, but Huawei claims that they have beaten Apple in global smartphone sales. I'm sales. rolling my eyes. <laughs> no, but December, apparently the data says that now they're second to Samsung. Apple has slipped to the third spot in December 2016. Oh dear, but I'm still going to stick to my Apple, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Pretty much. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Tune in every day at 8.30 to get a heads up on the markets. Thanks for watching.